So we've got three things here where we use ultrasound as a way of sensing what's in the world around us. So first of all, bats use frequencies higher than 20 kilohertz. Remember that ultrasound begins at 20,000 hertz, just above the audible uh, range that humans can hear. And what the bats do is they send out this signal and they can detect how long it takes for that signal to come back and that's how they actually work out where their prey are. But there are a couple of other uses. We can use uh, ultrasound for industrial uses and medical uses as well. Now let's take an example of maybe a pipe. Now the thing is with pipes is that they're buried underground and that means once you've put them down there, you can't just dig up the ground to actually go and inspect them because that would cost too much money and cause too much disruption. But what you can do is you can send a signal along the pipe and then this signal is going to reflect at a boundary. So here we have a pipe and at some point in the pipe we have a crack. Now if we had a thing called a transducer, what this does is it not only sends out a signal, but it also detects the signal as well. And when you have ultrasound, what we find is that the ultrasound wave is partially reflected at a boundary. So that's where the kind of material changes. So one boundary might be the crack because we're going from the pipe to the air back to the pipe. So we've got a boundary here, so that might cause some partial reflection of the signal. And also if the signal goes along to the end of the pipe, it's going to reflect off the end as well. So what you might have with your detector is you've got something here where you can look at the size of the signal up on the y-axis here, and then we'd have our time along the bottom. Now you've got to remember that uh, these uh, waves travel really quickly, so we're looking at maybe milliseconds here. So it's not going to take a lot of time for that signal to go out and come back again. But what you do is an engineer uh, will get a transducer, and this will then send a signal, and then it'll pick up the signal a small amount of time later. So maybe the initial signal was something like this. So that's the signal being sent out by the transmitter. Uh, a short amount of time later, there might be a signal received. And then a short amount of time later after that, there'll be maybe another signal. Now, this one here might be the trace for this pipe. It's a nice kind of simple one dimensional shape. So maybe this is the signal that's sent out. This is a partially reflected signal from the crack in the pipe up here. And this one here is from the end of the pipe when the signal gets to the end and bounces back again. Now what we're interested in here is the time it takes for that signal to go out and come back again. So I'll just call that T. Now what we're often interested in is a distance, which is S. And what we also know is that there's a certain wave speed of that ultrasound wave. Often this is going to be a lot higher in liquids and solids than it is in a gas. And if you know the time it takes for that signal to go out there and come back again, and you know how quickly it's traveling, we can then work out the distance. Now normally uh, we can say that the distance traveled is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. But here that's the time, that would be the total distance from maybe this end to the crack and back again. So what we're thinking about here really is the actual distance to the crack would be equal to a half of the speed times the total time for that signal to go there and come back again. And that then allows us to work out the distance of that crack from the end of the pipe. Now in addition to these industrial uses, we can use the same idea when it comes to looking at medical scanning. Now the reason that this is really good is because it is non-invasive, which means you can actually look inside the soft tissue inside a person without having to cut them open. And unlike things like CT scans or x-rays, there's no ionizing radiation being given off. So this is perfectly safe, uh, not only for the patient, but also the people who are actually using the equipment. And also if it comes to looking at pregnant ladies, the baby as well. So again, uh, what happens is, is that uh, somebody has a transducer and this is basically sending out an ultrasonic signal. And then we kind of pick up when that signal is reflected, perhaps uh, on different parts of the baby. And then what they're doing is they're basically taking lots and lots of these scans and then the computer is building up an actual image that we can actually, I suppose, see with our eyes. So what you see looks like a photograph, it's in black and white, and that shows maybe either a picture of the baby, and this is happening in real time, or nowadays we can also think about other scans which actually show the kind of three-dimensional picture of the baby inside. But it's not limited to looking just at pregnant ladies. This can be used for all sorts of scanning with soft tissue. So it might be that you maybe discover a lump or you've got some pain inside you, and it might be then that you can get an ultrasound scan maybe of your knee or your testicles or other parts of your body wherever there, there might be an issue and they can then actually have that kind of first look inside the body. So it basically relies on the fact that we have this ultrasonic wave higher than 20,000 hertz. It gets sent out, 
it reflects at a boundary between two different parts of the body or maybe the, the crack here in the pipe. It then bounces back and if we can record the time it takes to get there and back again and we know how quickly that signal is travelling, we can then work out the distance to different objects and then we can use some computers and other kind of bits and pieces to actually work out the distance and actually build up a picture of something that we can't see with visible light inside. So that is how we use ultrasound in everyday life.